Welcome to the Paint the Medical Picture podcast, a next improve it podcast series for best practice tips and insights for all your healthcare practices coding, billing, compliance, and reimbursement needs. I'm your host, Sanal Patel. Hello, and hope everyone is having a good day so far. Today is Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. My name is Sanal Patel, and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Welcome to my very first episode, episode number one. I'm very excited you found me here, and I hope you're here because you're my loyal LinkedIn followers, connections, colleagues, and friends over the years through word of mouth, or you're simply curious about this space of healthcare, where the patient's medical record, coding, and billing drive reimbursement. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And now, a quick disclaimer. Before I get started on the episode, this podcast episode and podcast series do not constitute legal advice, but I am fortunate to work with sound healthcare attorneys at Nexon Pruitt. And, As their consultant, I have over 10 years of experience in not only front-end, back-end, coding and billing for multi-specialty physicians, but also compliance and auditing for both E&M and surgical operative reports. Again, the opinions and insights throughout are mine alone, and they in no means constitute legal advice. Now, I have to admit that reading, writing, and research are my first loves. I was that cute little nerd my entire childhood, glasses and all since age five. Proud to say it now though, I still am. And having said that, I'm old school cool, writing on paper, reading paperback books, going to actual libraries, memorizing facts and figures, thinking critically and comprehensively. This is how I was raised. This was the schooling I had. These are the things I still love. So, doing an actual podcast for a non-techie type like myself was very daunting and putting me out of my comfort zone. But even my 16-year-old was like... Mom, get into it. And all of my friends were like, what the heck are you waiting for? Of course, no one said anything like that, exactly. But my mostly introvert ears heard their extrovert speech as a huge push off a very scary springboard diving board. But here I am, thanks to all of you. All right, so let's get into some industry news in a segment I want to call Newsworthy. But first, I wanted to give a shout out. As a nation, we've all been walloped with the details of the coronavirus COVID-19 for months now. As health information management professionals, as medical coders, billers, and compliance officers, we have been reeling with the seemingly endless changes in rules and regulations and have done our best to keep our heads above water. So kudos to all of you for that impressive feat. Now, on to Newsworthy. I wanted to highlight the facts that the CPT editorial panel has issued an August 2020 update and approved two new category one codes 
and two new proprietary laboratory analysis PLA codes specific to laboratory testing for COVID-19. These codes are number one, CPT code 86408 is for neutralizing antibody screen, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19, screen. The second CPT code is 86409 is for neutralizing antibody titer, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19, titer. The third is PLA code 00225U is for infectious disease, bacterial or viral respiratory tract infection, pathogen-specific DNA and RNA, 21 targets, including severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, amplified probe technique, including multiplex reverse transcription for RNA targets, each analyte reported as detected or not detected. What that means in a nutshell is it's describing a infectious agent detection by nucleic acid, that's your DNA and RNA, by amplified probe technique, through polymerase chain reaction and electrochemical detection. And then finally, our fourth new code is PLA code 0226U is for surrogate viral neutralization test, SVNT, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19, ELISA plasma serum. What that means in a nutshell is it's a high throughput quantitative blocking ELISA assay to assess the patient's viral neutralization capacity to SARS-CoV-2. The four new codes are effective immediately. So I recommend you should be manually uploading these code descriptors into your EHR system. Also good to note, Remember that Appendix O will also contain the PLA codes with their proprietary names in the CPT 2021 coding manual. The codes will be a part of the complete CPT code set in the data file for 2021 later this year. But time has flown by quickly and it has just been finalized as of September 1st. Now, because the CPT editorial panel literally just released the 2021 code set on September 1st, I also find it newsworthy to share the sweeping changes made to the quote unquote traditional evaluation and management or ENM office and outpatient visit codes we have been so accustomed to for over two decades. The American Medical Association, the AMA, continues to advise physicians and healthcare organizations to prepare now for the January 1st, 2021 implementation date. The intent behind these changes is part of the Patients Over Paperwork Initiative to assist our providers in focusing instead on quality patient care and decreasing their stress levels and levels of burnout. Patients over paperwork aims to decrease administrative tasks and high volumes of note bloat. The new ENM major changes include eliminating number one, CPT code 99201 for new patient, number two, eliminating the history and physical exam as criteria for code selection, and number three, the code levels are instead chosen by the medical decision making or time criteria. The additional changes in the 2021 CPT manual include 329 changes in total with 206 new codes, 69 revised code descriptions, and 54 deleted codes. So it's that time of year we have to roll up our sleeves and learn all of these new codes and what they mean to help our providers code correctly.
All right. And now it's time for my best practice tip in a segment I'd like to call trusty tip. I recently published an article in Healthcare Compliance Association's HCCA's August 2020 edition on modifier abuses already identified by the Office of Inspector General, the OIG. I was writing the article in April 2020 and three modifiers were already on their hit list in April. Two out of the three modifiers are the notorious bad boys in our industry, modifiers 25 and 59. Sadly, I can spend entire future episodes diving into these bad boys. It seems pretty clear to me that there is still widespread misuse and misunderstanding. But let's focus today's best practice tip, my trusty tip, on the shiny new modifier catching the eye of the OIG for the first time, modifier 62. This modifier is for two surgeons of same or different specialties who work together as primary surgeons performing distinct parts of a procedure. Each surgeon should report his or her distinct operative work by adding modifier 62 to the procedure code and any associated add-on codes for that procedure, as long as both surgeons continue to work together as primary surgeons. Each surgeon should report the co-surgery once using the same procedure code. If additional procedures, including add-on procedures, are performed during the same surgical session, separate codes may also be reported with modifier 62 added. So the keys here that I would like to point out to you are number one, each surgeon must document their own operative report. What portion of the surgical procedure did they perform? And number two, also document the, com the complex nature of the surgical procedure and documenting the patient's condition are necessary in capturing the why, the why for both surgeons as medically necessary as co-surgeons. Because remember, the other is not acting as an assistant at surgery. Some examples of co-surgeon surgeries with same specialty surgeons Maybe, let's say, for procedures for heart transplants with cardiovascular surgeons, or maybe bilateral knee replacements with orthopedic surgeons. Some examples of co surgeries with different specialty surgeons, maybe for, again, uh, the why. The approach for a complex spinal surgery may require the skills of a otolaryngologist, the ENT, or a neurosurgeon, and the orthopedic spine surgeon performs the distinct procedure. By painting all the details of the medical picture, a provider's documentation will support medical necessity. Remember, review your individual Medicare administrative contractor, your MAX, websites for guidance. Review your commercial payer reimbursement or clinical policy guidelines for direction as well, if applicable. Medical coders need to be aware of what surgical CPT codes support the addition of modifier 62 by reviewing the National Physician Fee Schedule Relative Value File. It will be very interesting, in my opinion, to see the results of this OIG audit and what co-surgeon procedures they have deemed as needing further documentation and correct coding education on. All right, and finally, this week's inspiring quote in a segment I'd like to call Spark is something that inspires me daily, or it's a quote that I've collected over the years, um, and I'm gonna find it relevant to this space in healthcare. So this week's spark is from Aristotle. Quality is not an act, it is a habit. So good. 
Even though this profound statement is from the 4th century BCE, there has been a tremendous need for a shift towards quality over quantity in healthcare at many different levels. I think it is something so many of our thought leaders in this space of healthcare are reflecting upon and aiming towards with fervor. I am happy Aristotle's spark still burns in us today. So that wraps up today's episode. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. You can always direct message me on LinkedIn or voice message me on the Anchor app. And if you would like to inquire about my consultant services, you can always reach me through my email address at nexonpruitt.com. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Please continue staying safe and healthy. Practice safety for one and all during our collective life in the time of coronavirus. Hope you join me next Wednesday for episode two in the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Thank you for listening in on my first episode, and I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday. If you want more information from me, go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn or send me an email at Sanal Patel at nexonpruitt.com for all my consulting services in medical coding, auditing, and compliance. Thank you.